Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. We're going to talk about Atari Records, what? And video games, top 10 classic arcade games. I know me growing up, Atari was God. It was the intro pretty much of you know the home video console and really good stuff. And of course, uh, with me, even at a young age, loving vinyl records, it was like a perfect thing when an uh, album label called Kid Stuff, uh, produced by... Uh, John Braden, uh, Kid Stuff albums, um, there's there's hundreds of them because there's there's like uh, kids stories were put on them, Jack and the Beanstalk, things like that. So they put out hundreds of albums. Uh, Kid Stuff album label, you know, it was about 1975 to about 87 uh, from Hollywood, Florida. And Atari uh, went with them. And like I said, this guy, uh, John Braden uh, produced them. John Braden was a musician at the time. And uh, Atari was like, hey, let's promote these games that are huge at the time, a little punks like me, even more by putting out a story about them and the vinyl albums. Um, this is Missile Command. Missile Command was the first one to come out in the three uh, LP series. Unfortunately, just three. I would have loved to see a Space Invaders one. That would have been awesome. Uh, or uh, Berserk would have been a great album cover as well. There's a book called The Art of Atari, I believe. It is a great book that has all the... I, I, I love the artwork here. I love this kind of cheesy 80s artwork. Great stuff. Oh yeah, be sure to like, subscribe, share, comment, tell your friends. My video views need all the help they can get. Um, yeah, so you have a little Atari themed song, you have a Missile Command song, you have a Zardin Commander song. Uh, so yeah, Hollywood, Florida here. Uh, Kid Stuff Records, they put these out. That's the back for you. Like I said, the second one they put out in a series of three was Asteroids. Gotta love that. This had Atari theme, Asteroids, and a song called Time Warp. Not Rocky Horror. Tim Curry not doing a Time Warp on this one. Uh, yeah, Inner Sleeve was lacking. Just, you know, white paper. And, uh, you know, just plain black vinyl. It's a shame, because nowadays they probably make it uh, picture uh, sleeve, or, you know, cool stuff in the inner sleeve, and then the uh, vinyl would probably be like a uh, picture disc with a big asteroid on it, or like asteroid color vinyl, you know, they do some cool stuff. Um, these go for like $30, I want to say, each. They're not cheap, like you won't find them at like a, a store in like a, a dollar bin or anything like that. They go for a little, little more than, uh, you know, some average little 80s album, but uh, the third and final one was Yars Revenge. I don't know how successful this was as an Atari game. It was one of my favorite Atari games by far. Loved Yars Revenge. Um, but yeah, I never knew how much out of the uh, out of the cult-loving kids like me it made to the mainstream. But this is a cult classic here. Yars Revenge it had the Atari theme, Fly Yar Warriors, and Yars Revenge theme, all produced, like I said, by John Braden. Um, and this was, uh, yeah, this was all like 82, 83, and then boom, boom, boom. I don't know if they didn't sell well, or they just wanted to do three of them. Um, I know I had a Yars Revenge 45. I've seen on eBay the Asteroids 45. Let me know in the comments below if you've seen any other Atari theme uh, 45s or 12 inches out there. I think it's a really cool promo. Man, we were in the 80s, we were lucky with promos, either as fast food toys, or Atari putting out some albums through uh, Kid Stuff Records. We just, good stuff, man. And of course, you could not be an ace kids on the school bus riding to school without singing the words to Pac Man Fever by the uh, Hitmakers. Watch out, Lennon and Carty. Here come Buckner and Garcia. Their hit Pac Man Fever. This is a full length album. It has uh, Pac Man Fever, Froggy's Lamet. Ode to a Centipede, you know, yeah, it's got tons of, it's got eight songs, all arcade theme songs. I still have the little hype sticker, it's in the little shrink wrap here, although I think it is open. Is it open? Yeah. And uh, the inner sleeve, let's check that out. Again, anyone wants to, uh, you know, any little label or uh, Rhino Records, you guys always do cool stuff. I say re-release these. Let the kids have some fun here. Yeah, so this is all, uh, this is like steps you get to the Pac-Man. You can't underestimate the power that Pac-Man had at one time. I remember as a kid growing up outside Chicago here, we lined up at Sears. Remember that store, Sears in Oak Brook, Illinois, to get the, the uh, old Atari 2600, the Pac-Man. And it was like 30 or $40. It was a big purchase at the time. And I remember bringing it home like, oh my God, this is the best. That's me playing Atari. 
nothing else. Um, yeah, so that's the Atari albums. Um, you know, like I said, you brought home the 2600. Outlaws are my favorite game. Put these big things into the unit. Some people had the Atari unit, some people like me, the uh, cheaper poor kids had the uh, Sears uh, knockoff version of the Atari 2600. And it was fun times. Now speaking about video games, which we are, let's go for the top 10 video games who have earned the most of all time, according to a web review that I did, if you want to trust the internet. Uh, number 10 was Donkey Kong, which I can see. It's a huge popular game. Number 9, Mortal Kombat. The ninth most popular game with uh, cabinet sold and all that stuff. Mortal Kombat. Eighth was Mortal Kombat 2. I think I, I don't really play those ones. I think that's the one that will fight and then you jump and kick. I never was good at those kind of. I think they had like Street Fighter. That was what, Blanca and all them. Yeah, I was never good at that. Number 7, Asteroids. Number six, Defender. Oh, that's a good game. Number five was NBA Jam. I can see that, sports game. Number four was Miss Pac-Man. Third most popular arcade game was Street Fighter 2. There we go with Street Fighter. Number two was Space Invaders. And the first most popular game of all time that made about 8 million and sold 400,000 cabinets. 400,000 arcade cabinets of this were sold. Talking about Pac-Man. Now, if you're going to go with my top 10, I'm going to have to take you to the world's largest arcade in Brookfield, Illinois, the Galloping Ghost. Wonderful time there. Uh, currently, the rate is you pay 25 bucks and you get unlimited free play. You can stay all day and all night. It is awesome. Uh, you know, I go through there and I hit the old classics like Frogger, Frontline, Gorf, Cubert, Moon Patrol. Missile Command, all just great games being played in the arcades. You just had your thing of quarters, or if you're really lucky, you got a five bill or a twenty dollar bill and put that in the change thing. Got all these quarters, a big pocket full of quarters. I love pinball too, but this one's more about arcade games. Um, so really good stuff. And in some games, just had a cool marquee, but the actual game kind of was kind of bad. I'm looking at you, Death Race. So if I had to pick a top 10, here's my top 10 video arcade games that I would be putting the quarters into. Or if I go to Galloping Ghost, I just prepay, and here I go. Number 10, it's because of my current trade. I've been one for over 20 years now. Zookeeper from 1982. Uh, Teato, I believe is how you would say it. So you're just pretty much a zookeeper. You keep everything in by going in a square. And then after that level, you get thrown into a level that looks especially like Donkey Kong. But it's kind of a fun game. I never knew it really existed way back in the day, only recently, because the arcade has it, I learned of Zookeeper. Number nine for me would be NHL Open Ice. Love hockey, it's my favorite sport. This came out from Midway in 1995. Of course, I like to be the Blackhawk players. Uh, you can also be, if you're LA Kings, you could be the great Wayne Gretzky. And it's just a really fun hockey game. Two on two, I never really know if I'm shooting or passing. I just have a fun time. Number eight would be 1942, kind of a World War II themed game. You're playing, flying over, I don't know if it would be the Pacific, and just dropping bombs on every ship you see and shooting down all these planes. Fun time. Uh, came out in 1984. Number seven would be Jungle King. You're a little Jungle King. Uh, when it was released for Atari Home System, I believe they changed the name to Jungle Hunt. Uh, but the arcade cabinet was Jungle King. Came out in 1982, again by Teato. And you're just, dude, just like swimming through, stabbing crocs. You're jumping over boulders all the end to get your little hot blonde. Oh, fun times in the 80s. Number six was a game that was kind of scary. Kind of scary. Like listening to Slayer was scary. Playing this game was scary. Satan's Hollow came out in 81 by Midway. Great graphics. Uh, you get, you know, you're pretty much just shooting up like a lot of the space kind of games at the time, just shooting up, kind of like, you know, Space Invader style. But then you build your bridge, you go cry, and then you eventually uh, get to, you know, shoot little arrows at Satan. That's always fun. Who doesn't like to shoot at Satan? Number five, I gotta go with Space Invaders. It was really hard at the arcade to go pretty far on the home unit, the Atari 2600. 
I was the best. Amongst my group of friends, no one could beat me on Space Invaders. I would just play till I fell asleep. Because I could get into the jam of just shooting all the little aliens. Doop, doop, they march down. And I could just get to a point where I could get them all. No matter what, they weren't killing me. So I'll just clear screen after screen after screen after screen. One of the few games that I just conquered and I was the best at it. Number four, I don't know why you're hopping on an ostrich trying to joust other people with ostriches. But uh, Joust, it's a great game. It came out uh, from Williams in 1982. One of my favorite. Joust 2 is also fun, but for me, number four would be Joust. Number three, one of the oldest ones, probably the oldest one on my list from 1979, Asteroids. A lot of arcades, you know, those early arcades had it. You had a lot of pinball. Then they had a few cabinets. And one of the few first few cabinets they seemed to get was Asteroids. Very simple. You're a triangle hitting these crater-looking things, and they break up into smaller pieces. And every once in a while, a little spaceship tries to get you. Very simple game, but very awesome game. Number three, Asteroids. Now, number two was from a movie. Back in the day when I tried to play, I always got killed instantly, but you have like four little areas to pick from, and I'm talking about Tron. A great joystick thing, a great look in the cabinet. I love the play of it. Like I said, I could never really clear past level two back then. Now, same story. I can never really clear past, but it's a fun, beautiful thing to me. I love the Tron movie back then. I like the uh, newer Tron one too that came out, I don't know, within the last 20 years or so. Uh, but yeah, so it's a good thing. Tron number two. Now, number one. Back in the day, kind of like Tron, I didn't play it much because I knew I was going to lose a lot of quarters. Uh, so I stuck more, you know, to pinball and things like that or Pong. Um, but yeah, Journey, hot band, hot band. You talk songs like Open Arms, the song that will never die. Don't stop believing. It's made the group like nine billion a year or something crazy amounts. Uh, you know, the Escape Tour was hot. So this came out in '82. And, uh, you know, they were sure. It was a sure hit. And I didn't play it a lot, like I said, back then. But when I go to the arcade now, oh, that's the first. And it's close to the Tron cabinet. So for me, I got my first two. Boom, boom. Favorite two games pretty much right next to each other. I think also on that roll is uh, Tapper and a few other cool, cool games. But anyway, let's go back to my number one journey game. Came out in 1983 by Bally, who made you know a lot of awesome pinball games. It's a lot like Tron, where you have the options to pick from. Obviously, with Journey being a five-man band, you have five options. You can go to Steve Perry, you know, Steve Smith with the drums, John Kane, Ross Valerie, Neil Shuns, that probably the easiest of them for me with the little jet pack. It's really easy to get past. You get past all of them, and then you move to another level. Uh, I get excited when I move to that other level uh, because certain games you could play unlimited and you could build upon your past success other games like Tron and Journey kind of start over so you can play unlimited times but you always have to start over so in order to get to level two you have to beat level one and for me it's a big accomplishment here I am beating level one and playing the uh, security dude just for a hot minute because I always lose that screen pretty fast but yeah if you're looking by what game makes you feel good and what game to me speaks of the 80s and you know has the rock band journey for me number one is journey well let me know in comments below what some of your favorite video games are and as always thanks for watching